Hi guys, it's me Karen and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Today I'm going to work on this page here. I'm going to try to fold this. This is the Forest Girl Coloring Book Premium Edition, the hardback one. There we go. I've got it all taped because I'm going to be using some ink here to do um, kind of the background and the roof. So I've got out um, scattered straw which if we look around on this side, all uh, kind of is the same color as the lightest color in the walls and up here in the ceiling, some of the uh, little bits and pieces that are around. This is a warmer tone that kind of runs into this. And we have a darker brown vintage photo, which kind of runs into this color up here along with the darkest color walnut stain. So I'm going to use these colors and run it around in the background area and get a portion of this whole page done without having to use a whole bunch of pencils. So I forgot the one thing I needed was the little sponge that goes on here. Come on, out we go. Drop everything on the floor. Yeah, these are the sponges. Um, I have everything on here. They come in a pack like this. It's a Ranger product, Tim Holtz. Uh, they collaborate a lot. You'll notice Ranger is put on most of Tim Holtz products, and Tim Holtz's name is on most of the other products that. Um, Ranger does. <laughs> okay, since we have a new sponge on here and it has absolutely no ink on it, I'm going to get out a piece of paper here because we have to load the, bra or the, the pad. Now, a lot of people will say that their ink pads aren't very wet or they're dry. Well, if you take it like this and you rub it on your paper, you're going to get this funky look here. Most of my ink pads are this saturated with color. I don't clean them. I leave them so I can just use them in my artwork. Okay, so when you're loading this, you want to make sure it goes down into and covers the whole circle here. If you want it covering the whole circle, usually I just do half of the circle. But I'm trying to show you how to load the pad here. So you got that. Now you get some of this going. And see how it's different. We still have a little edge going there I want to get rid of. And there we go. Now you notice that the whole ink pad here is covered with ink along with the top except for this tiny little bit here. So I'll just use that corner. I could get it all the way in there. But I want to be careful. And then I always smush it down pretty hard when I am um, making sure the whole thing is loaded. Okay, then I can just use it by dipping it back in. So we're going to go up here in the page and put that color down. And brighten that part up. Um, the section here of this wood is brighter, so we're just going to come down and add that color in here. There's a light fixture here, some brightness going around that. There's a light fixture up here. We'll put some around there. There's a brightness going on in here. Now, 
Now when you load that one corner, you can just put that one corner on there and darken one section of the wall. This takes practice. You can always practice on something other than your page, but ink is quite forgiving, especially if you're going to put more than one coat on here. We have a wall here and a wall here. We have a rug going on there. We have a light. Make that a little darker. We come down this wall. It's kind of an old wall, so it has shading and such in it. Down here in the table area, we have a lightness going on in the center of the table, so we're going to put a little of that in there. Her box here, also got some of that. We're going to put a little in the seat, because why not? And we have a little box over here. We'll put some of that in there. Paper boxes. Ball. Everything can have a little bit of a yellow hue to it. I think that's a could be a piano or just more boxes. This is a mattress of some sort and some boxes. Okay, that's it for the scattered straw. Then we're going to darken it up a little bit with the wild honey. It's a little bit more of an orange color. And I'm going to use the same pad and kind of pick up some of that color on the corner here, see? Then we're just going to darken up here a little bit. Well, can you see the top? I hope. Darken down here. In here. I put a piece of paper behind that corner up here just so I don't get the other pages marked. Just add a little brightness back there. And we'll just touch it a little bit in here. Wild Honey. We'll go in with the Vintage Photo now. Same ink pad. Just going to darken it. Goes in here. Just darken that a little bit. Pull it upward in the wood framing. that across. <laughs> we can come up here and darken some of that.
take it through these. Bring it down through those beams. And these boxes down here are just a bit darker, so we'll put some there. Okay. I'm gonna put a little of the vintage or the, the walnut stain in here too. And this is the darkest color. I'm gonna put that up in there in the corner and pull some of that down. Put a little there. I need the tinier stick to do that kind of stuff with. I'm gonna put some here, pull it upward. We got a little stick. We're going to fill that up with ink. weird that this beam doesn't have a line here so we're gonna put one in so it all goes down in the same area <laughs> they're kind of crooked okay I'm gonna show you what that looks like now that we have that part done okay then we're gonna bring in some pencils this is Van Tyke Brown, and I might have to get you down a little closer. Okay, so you're just going to take this and we're going to kind of go in between these lines. Okay, so we're going to follow these lines, darken them. Darken up this wood. Put some wood grain in it. This little one here. Okay. 
And then we're going to draw these lines back in. We need a different color here. I'm bringing a chocolate. A chocolate, um, so far we were just using polychromos. This is a Holbein, it's called chocolate. So I thought I'd bring in a nice little brownish color here that has a little bit of red in it. Maybe chocolate isn't the best. Let's go with burnt sienna. That'll add a little more red in there. <clears throat> no, I don't plan out anything in my pages, if you're wondering. <laughs> and I'm um, kind of just kind of following a little bit of the coloration that's in the other side of the page over there. Also remembering, you know, uh, wood has grain in it. It's not just... A solid color so you want to bring in some of that texture into the wood wood grain is always done best with not thinking about it too much and a very shaky hand and there Bring up some of the wood grain and that color, leaving it kind of dark down in this area. It should be a shadowy part. And then bringing it up lighter into this area, but with that texture still in the wood. This wood is like a couple of colors. Which I think is interesting. So there's a whole line here. A lighter here and a darker up at the top.
dark up here and bring some of those lines down. change in between some colors here and you can get um, some knots in there. So we'll put a knot right there. Maybe a knot here. just going to keep going and doing that all the way across. We have a shadow that comes up right about here. It's the shadow from the light that comes up on the piece of wood here. A little one that comes down here. And then of course this is a shadow here. So we can throw a little more of the um, walnut stain up on the top up here. Put a little bit more of the vintage photo right up here too. play with it back and forth between pencils and the ink. What do we have here? This is the chocolate. I don't want to use that one yet. edge here and try to make this wood look like it's a piece of wood because technically if you have an attic it should have at least a wall piece this is wall to wall it should be even so I'm going to take it down here here. Make that the wall piece. This is, I guess, a, um, well, these are trusses that hold up the attic space. They shouldn't be uneven either, but they are. Just, I mean, they're way off from the wall piece. I shouldn't get 
too picky. Just kind of bring that to there and bring this over a little bit. Something like that will make me feel better. <laughs> And we'll bring a piece over up here. Should be straighter than that, but. All right. Do these tresses. I have to turn up bow to do that. Back with the, um, what was I using? The Van Dyke Brown. Okay, there's not much detail here, but wood doesn't come exactly like that. So we're going to have to edge it a little bit. It has to be put together somehow. So we'll kind of go right down from corner to corner. And then straight across, so straight across, corner to corner. Okay, this piece is the bottom. Gonna get that rose detail a little lighter there too. Then we're gonna bring in the red again. paper just to get a little straighter edge here. Okay. 
I'm going up. bring in sepia and we're gonna get that just a little sharper in the detail of this rose here getting it to look like a piece of wood there. Okay, let's see. I have a little bit of a Caran d'Ache blender stick here. We're just going to push that down into the paper to get rid of some of the tooth. Because we have a lot of tooth in this paper. Just to smear it around a little bit. There we go. Just gives it a smoother look. I'm going to get some other pencils out and work a little bit more on that. We need a kind of a yellowish color for our lights that go on here. So we're going to get that dark maples yellow out and on 
this board here. We're going to add a little of that. There's a light around here, light source. And here, this is a light source. I'm going to make sure if we get that light source in the wood. this up here. Brightens it up a little bit. And down in here. All these little boards are going to be done the same way as this one. We do have to very carefully erase our little, I don't know what these are, ropes or whatever they are. They are inked over but I want to have them at least show up a little bit and we're going to put a little darkness in there. Go with the uh, chocolate here, just on one side of the rope. Bring that color out gently on both sides. This one loops on the back so I can darken that. There we go. Might lighten those up with. Oh, who knows? What do we have here? Ivory. Ouch. <laughs> 
ram my arm into a door. Okay, ivory, and we're gonna go on those little ropey things and lighten those up just a touch. That's just the uh, Van Dyke Brown that I was using. Now I've used light pressure on most of this coloring, so you will see a lot of the paper coming through, but because I'm layering a whole bunch of colors on here, I want those lighter colors to come through darkening them would not be a good idea right now. Can darken that a little though. here. Make it a little bigger so it'll fit in this area. It's going to come through there, so we're going to lighten that up a little. There we go. Okay. A little chocolate up here. i got to put that paper back. I just don't want to go under the door here. Under the other paper. So I'm just going to darken that up a little bit. Just by putting hash marks on it to pull it up. Funny as you don't see this in the other picture. <laughs> so, 
We're going to darken this area too, just by bringing some of those up there, right over the rows. Darkest spot up here on the very tip top. sit still and not go anywhere. I've got it angled here. going. It's getting there. But the video is also getting very long, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is call it for today. I'll leave the page as is, and we will get back to it in the next video. So I'll lift up the camera here. Not much, but that's what we're getting so far. We're going to do a little bit of shading down here, too. I mean, the whole page is going to get done, but that wall just a little bit. More colored here. This is a rug hanging on the uh, wall, so it's like a tapestry. And these are bugging me. <laughs> They're just too light for up here. I think I'll just make them a wood color. So I'll match this one up here and just bring a line down in there. Anyway, that's what we got for so far, and I will see you in the next part. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section down below, and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye now.